So we're starting Chapter 9, Tides. Um, we follow this right after the Waves chapter, and it sort of makes sense because we're going to see how tides are actually waves. So what is a tide? It's the periodic rise and fall of the ocean and connected bodies of water, uh, resulting from gravitational attraction of the moon and the sun, and how they act unequally on the different parts of the Earth. We're basically going to go through every piece of this as we go through this. So tides are kind of important. Um, they've been keeping records of them for um since 400 BC, over 2,000 years. And Isaac Newton was the first person who really had a big and valid explanation for why the tide is what it is. And it's because of gravity, um, the universal law of gravitation, or the standard model, it's called. And tides are shallow water waves. Um, they have incredibly long wavelength, lengths in the thousands to tens of thousands of kilometers. We'll talk about that more as we go on. So we need to talk about what causes tides. Now, remember this formula, um, you've seen it before, where F is the, the gravitational force is equal to the gravitational constant um, times uh, the mass of the two objects divided by their uh, distance or their radius squared, the distance between them. And we're going to come back and talk about each piece of this because you need to know what causes tides. Now, the first thing you have to remember, there's a barycenter. The barycenter is the center of mass of the system because the Earth and Moon together um, act as one gravitational system that spins on its um, b around its barycenter and then moves around the sun. Um, the Earth is weighs significantly more than the Moon in terms of mass, and so the barycenter is kind of tilted towards the Earth. It's almost like if you want to imagine the fulcrum of a seesaw. It's uh, the Earth is so big or so fat that the fulcrum has to be very very close to it. As a matter of fact, it's about a thousand miles below the Earth's surface. And that is the point upon which the Earth and the Moon rotate. Now, tide uh, are created by the imbalance between two forces, gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Moon and gravitational attraction between the Earth and the Sun, um, as well as what we'll call resultant forces. So let's look at the formula for a second. Mass is on the top. It's right here. And if, if mass increases, um, it's on the top. It, there's no squaring there. That 1 and 2 stand for mass 1 and mass 2, not any type of mathematical thing then gravity is going to increase by the same factor. So if you double the masses, then the gravitational force is going to double, or the attraction between them. This is in contrast to what happens with distance. If distance increases, now distance is down here on the bottom. If distance increases, then gravitational force greatly decreases. Well, let's talk about why it decreases. Because distance is on the bottom, um, if you make that bigger, you're going to divide by a bigger number, so gravitational force is going to get smaller, F. But why does it greatly decrease? Well, it's because this right here, we're squaring it. Um, so any one-fold change in distance is actually going to be an exponential change in the gravitational force. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things you need to know here, and this one's really, really important right here. Um, you know what? I checked that. You know what? I'm going to start it. Um, I'll just draw a circle around it. From that formula, we know that gravity is directly proportional to the product of the masses, but it's inversely proportional to the square, square being the key word here, of the distance between the objects. That's just a way of summing up the relationship in the equation. Two um, definitions you need to know. Zenith is the point closest to the moon. That's where, um, and remember, it's a function of distance, so it's going to have the highest gravitational force. The nadir is the point farthest from the moon, therefore the weakest gravitational force. And centripetal um, is center-seeking force. Uh, this is like in physics where they talked about uh, swinging a bucket of water, um, and you have the force along the string that's pulling the object back toward its parents. This is different than centrifugal force, which is part of um, the velocity of angular momentum. All right, so let's talk about gravitational force on the Earth to the moon. Now remember, the barycenter... Um, about the system about which they spin is right about there. And all of the, notice these arrows are all pointing towards the center of the Earth. This is going to be really important later on. Um, it's going to explain why the it's not pulled on evenly all over the Earth. So basically, everywhere on the Earth, uh, gravitational force pulls towards the center of the moon. And the farther away you get from the moon, the um, weaker the force. Notice the arrow over here is significantly smaller than the arrow over here. Now let's talk about centripetal force. Centripetal force is due to um, the circular motion of that uh, system, of the Earth-Moon system. Notice it pulls in the same direction everywhere on Earth, and it's the same strength. Notice these arrows right here, same size. 
and the force is going to be perpendicular to the surface of the Earth. Um, it's directed towards the moon, but not towards the center of the moon. Um, this becomes really important as we move on. Before we talk about resultant forces, I'm going to stop here just so that the file isn't ginormous because the pictures are kind of important.